So, moving on then to the next topic that I want to talk about, and it involves our Season 1 champion, Nelson P.K. Jr., and it's the rise and sort of fall of Nelson P.K. Jr., because for me, I used to love talking to Nelson P.K. Jr., I really did, he came up with some amazing stories, I remember back in Season 2, when that Neo car was just atrocious, and everyone was asking him the same questions, and you just thought, oh, well, what can I do differently to talk to Nelson P.K. Jr.? I think it was in Paris. I was like, so what are you going to do to like get better? And he was like, oh, we're going to do this, this, X, Y, Z. This is what I'm doing. This is how I'm focusing for season three to try get the car to become better. Uh, and, you know, you could have a fantastic conversation if you didn't just repeat the dull same questions. Why are you slow? I used to love the challenge of actually talking to Nelson P.K. Jr. But Jack, he was the first driver, really, to sort of... Back in season one when he won that championship, he was the first driver to get on top of energy management and actually understand how to use the energy in the correct places, where to recover it, how to manage it. So he always had, he always had 3%, 3-4% more than any other driver at that period. So he started off his Formula E career really strong. Well, yeah. I, I funny enough, I was watching the uh, the uh, the season one Long Beach race uh, the the other day, the one uh, his, his first race win, um, and yeah, he was he 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 was definitely by by a long way he was the first one to like properly get uh, get on with like the the energy management, and you can tell that even in even in season two. Uh, the, uh, the start of season two, he'd still have four or five percent more than 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 everyone else. Obviously, by then, um, the the performance of the car wasn't great, but because he got the the whole the the energy management brilliant by the first uh, by Long Beach, basically, he 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 absolutely just rocketed on and 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 took and took that championship and. And and when he was told he was champion in uh, in season one in Battersea, Jack Jack Nichols told him that he was champion, and Jack Nichols wasn't actually sure that he was champion. So I th I think uh, I I think that was brilliant from him. But yeah, no, I was uh, I I was always a big fan of of uh, Nelson in Formula E. So yeah, I uh, it it uh, it was it was getting to see uh, his performance kind of. Uh, dwindle over the years and the thing is even when he switched to Jaguar in season four the first four or five races it looked like oh, okay this is the old Nelson he was the top he was top five in the championship and then he just had a string of non-finishes and then ended up finishing about 12th in the championship and then it just came to season five and he just had an absolutely torrid time and unfortunately left the sport no, I agree, and it was actually it's an interesting story actually why um, he sort of you know went to Jaguar in, in a sense because I remember back I was interviewing him again it was about in Monaco time I, I remember and he said you know he was talking about season four because obviously season three was a better year for Neo season two was a complete write off the car was way too heavy with the twin motor system it was just it was just a awful car the car made progress in season three and it, it was set to make progress again in season four the way nelson pk was talking about it he was telling me you know neo gonna win races next season we're gonna be fine for pole positions we're gonna be fine for race wins and podiums and then he left so then i asked him i was like so so why did you leave and it, it was sort of the it wasn't going to go or it wasn't going to be consistent there was a lot of changes there was a lot of politic politics going on in the background and he thought you know he just wanted to jump ship and that's what he did because Neo actually in season four was had a good car like he wasn't wrong like Oliver Turvey was you know fighting in Mexico for example could have nearly won that race in Mexico if his car didn't um, fall apart on the main straight so imagine what he could have possibly have done in that Neo car um, so it definitely was making progress but I thought it was interesting why he left but Will my question is is because of this sort of fall they had in at Jaguar, it sort of didn't go the way that he wanted. Even you remembering in Neo, like it did pick up again. Season three, remember Neo locked out the front row, so he he still had the talent going into season four and season five at Jaguar. It should have been really a a sweet story with him and Mitch Evans pushing that Jaguar car forward in order to fight for world championships. But now, if we look back in a couple of years' time, will we put Nelson Piquet in the same breadth? as possibly Lucas Degrassi 
and, and Jean Eric Vaughan for their successes in Formula E. I get we had this discussion on Monday about Oliver Turvey kind of getting stuck at Neo, and you know, in that sense, you can see why potentially there would have been the desire from PK to you know, and if you look at the Jaguar team that he moved to in, in season four, you know, him and Evans both finished ahead of Turvey in the standings. So while it was a, a decent season for for Turvey, as you reference his, his podium, I think I think you, you know I can see the logic behind going to a team like Jaguar. And you know, if you had a top form PK partnering Mitch Evans now, you know that that could be a team that's challenging for the for the title and and both drivers like in with a shot of the drivers championship so it's it's undoubted that pk is a is a very good driver you know you look at his his record in, in gp2 in formula one and then his early days in, in formula e as well you know he he's always been a driver who can produce excellent results you know he's, he's had podiums in in formula one as well um let's not forget so this isn't uh a kind of driver who who doesn't have kind of excellent performances in him but his his lack of consistency and you know the number of of retirements that he's had over his career is probably something that's going to damage his legacy in in Formula E um it's not going to be leave him in the same bracket as someone like a a Lucas de Gracia a Boemi or a John Eriffan just because you know he he wasn't able to continue to produce over a number of seasons and you know, he had a good opportunity at, at a good team like Jaguar, and he he didn't take it. Um, whereas someone like Mitch Evans has. No, I agree. It's, it's a shame, really, because that's our season one champion. You know, and I suppose maybe season one champions are, are, are maybe are forgotten down the lines. But I just feel what Nelson Piquet did at the beginning, and to be so good and so aggressive, and 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 to to get the technology and to understand the car the way that he did correctly, and that the fact that he's not in Formula E now, you know, competing like Bowemi is still, like the Grassi is, like Vern is, you know, those season one protagonists, that he's not part of that anymore. It's, it's actually it's quite a sad story, really. But you know, whether he whether he'll be a name that we remember. Oh, Nelson PK Jr. What a career that he had. Well, time, only time will tell. But to be honest with you, I can I can see that failing. I can see that falling off. And us, you know, in 10, 15 years time, when we come to review, you know, Formula E, we'd be talking more about the Verns, the Grasses, and the Bohemies, and and PK would just get like a side note. One thing that I would like to add about Nelson PK, because the thing is, every every everyone seemed to perceive him as uh as a bloke who was always quite grumpy all all, 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 all the time when it, and yes and, and yes that was the case when it, it wasn't his day and unfortunately towards the end of his formula e career wasn't great but he 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 is genuinely such such a good guy I, i've 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 met him on quite a few occasions and he and he willingly signed a pizza box that i gave him in uh, in Bastley park in season 1 so so that so I I I think that proves that uh that, that he does have a sense of humour and 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 that and that, and that he is an all round good guy. So yeah, I a hundred percent back that because the conversations I've had with him have been great, and he's he's always giving me the time of day. Like he, some drivers don't give you the time of day sometimes because they're busy or they've got to leave. But Nelson PK Jr. always made. He made a point. No, 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 no. I need to speak to him. You know, I need to. I need to tell him what's happened. I'm not going to leave yet. I need to speak to him. And I, I, I really appreciated that. So straight away, that tells me what sort of a guy Nelson PK Jr. is. And for me, it's a shame because I used to love interviewing him. He was always up for a chat. He was. He and he was good around the paddock. Yes, he did have that perception of being moody. But he was. A, he's a race winner. He wants to win races. Degrassi isn't happy when things aren't going right. But people don't really call him moody. OK, but Nelson PK Jr., because it was consistent and it always seemed to happen year after year that the car just didn't work, then I suppose that's why he always looked moody.